All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I wanted to update you guys on the winter season so far with the fig trees. Um, I also wanted to talk to you guys and some of you that are in zones five and six or even the middle of the country that have been getting really hit hard this winter. I know there was a nasty cold spell that came in, um, hit the middle of the country. Just like last year, it was even worse last year. I know if you guys watched the, the Chiefs game, at, during the playoffs, they were on the field and it was a negative 30 wind chill. So this is not good for figs because the fig, although it will always survive, it will always come back from the roots. If you can keep the roots above 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit in the wintertime, they're always going to re-sprout. They're always going to continue to grow. That's not really the concern. The concern is if we get our fig trees without any damage, it means the, the branches themselves here on the trees don't take any damage. The growth tips are preserved, the apical and lateral buds, typically the top third of the new growth from last year. If that survives, our trees will be in a state of hormonal balance that will enable most fig trees, if not all of them, to actually fruit very easily next year. And that way they don't grow like crazy and repeat this vicious cycle of just not being very hardy. And what I mean by that is that if we can get our trees in the right hormonal balance by not really pruning them much, or if we do prune them, it's a heading, a thinning cut, excuse me, not a heading cut. So if we have, let's say, you know, three branches here at my fingertips, if I cut them back by a third, that's called a heading cut. If I just take the one out in the middle and bring it back as far as I can, that's a thinning cut. And that will keep our trees, even though we're doing winter pruning, which typically is not great for encouraging our trees to flower and fruit, uh, summer pruning is really the tool that helps us do that the best. But if we are doing winter pruning, and that's mainly what we do for fig trees, that's the style we wanna do, is that thinning cut. Because that's gonna enable the trees to remain in this hormonal balance. By enabling them to have the right hormones, they're gonna then fruit next year. And by fruiting, they're gonna slow down that growth because if a tree is discouraged from fruiting by the wrong kind of pruning or a lot of winter damage, there's no real difference. That heavy winter pruning will throw our trees into that state of hormonal imbalance. The trees are not gonna fruit. And so instead, when the tree is getting this photosynthesis, this energy from photosynthesis, all that is then being directed into growth. And this may be a good thing. Some people actually want this. Um, you know, instead of having them actually fruit, they just want their young fig trees to grow. That's one option. And in fact, you can cut them really far down to the base, cover them with some wood chips and stuff. I've had fig trees after that, they grow to 10 feet tall. But the problem is then protecting them the next year because they're not lignified properly. Lignification is the process of hardening the branches to prepare them for the winter time. This is a normal process that, that fig trees go through and it really makes the trees hardier and be able to withstand the temperatures that they should. And so if a fig tree can genetically, let's say like Hardy Chicago, it should be able to get through a temperature of zero degrees Fahrenheit without any damage. Some varieties can get through as low as five degrees Fahrenheit and that's really impressive too. Others can't really get below 10 and survive. Um, so a variety like Hardy Chicago, if it's gonna do that and actually do what it says, its genetics say that it can do, the branches have to be lignified. And the only way to get them really well lignified is to make sure the growth is slowed down. And you, as the grower, are in 100% control, this is the beauty of it, of your tree's hormones. And so if you do the wrong thing, you can impact the hormones in the wrong way, encourage the tree to grow well into the fall, then the frost comes in, the branches aren't lignified well, and then if you see a temperature below 10 or even 15, maybe even by the way, I've seen in like Louisiana and the South, fig trees like Hardy Chicago can still take damage even like down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And you would think, well, why is my Hardy Chicago taking damage only at 20 degrees Fahrenheit when it should go down to zero? And it's just really that simple. So my point is, is that, you know, a lot of the middle of the country guys, I'm sorry that 
this happened to you and you know it, it is what it is you got another year under your belt of learning about fig trees and experiencing their you know winter lows and how this all affects fig trees and observe it see how your fig tree after it was really killed hard by the cold see how it responds the next year you're going to see a lot of new growth uh, and it's going to be difficult to get it to fruit but instead if you can protect it like i have and i've talked a lot about this you know, even just taking a branch that's kind of low to the ground, bending it all the way to the to the, the soil, staking it there, and then covering it with wood chips, that makes a big deal. Just being able to protect all these apical and lateral buds, the higher points on our tree. Now, a tree like this is really difficult to protect because it's getting obviously larger and wider. And so one of the things, instead of protecting them, by covering them with insulative materials, getting them really close to the earth, which is a heat source. Instead, we take a tarp and we actually wrap our trees. Now, for me, I didn't do any wrapping this year. Here's some tarps here on the ground. I have, was anticipating to protect this Rondé Bardot. I just said, you know what? We'll do a little experiment because this Rondé Bardot here is not as lignified as another Rondé Bardot I have over there next to the AC unit. And so I wanted to see if the lignification really mattered. Now, of course, I think it does matter, but we didn't really get a low enough uh, winter low here to even test the theory um, because we've only gotten down to 14. And I've gotten, again, just really lucky this year. This is, I think, the fourth year in a row where we've had mild temperatures, at least in terms of fig trees. Um, you know, the daytime temps I haven't loved, but... Uh, you know, if we don't get below 10, I would consider that a very mild winter time. And that's pretty much four years in a row, I think. Uh, I think we had, uh, you know, this year is 14. I think last year was about 8 or 12. The other years were about 10, somewhere in there. Um, but then prior years to that, I've experienced much worse where we got down to zero or uh, two degrees Fahrenheit or four or five degrees Fahrenheit. And that was much more extreme and the fig trees really didn't like that. So this is just, unfortunately, you know, you play, gotta play the averages. You have to take what you can get and, um, you know, take advantage of the resources around you as well. Even though, you know, I didn't wrap my fig trees um, like I had uh, anticipated. I did protect every fig tree in my in my yard. Every fig tree here, I have a, over 100 fig trees. They are protected in some sense with these wood chips. So even though this the top of this tree, you know, I could have wrapped it, I could have protected it in some way. I, instead, I protected the base. And so that if this tree does indeed get killed by the cold and it gets killed really far back, I have some branches that have grown really well last year. I bent them over to the, into the, to the ground, like I said, covered them with those wood chips. And so every tree has that insurance policy, just as a little bit of added protection. Because like I said, if, if this top of the tree takes damage and the whole thing takes damage, it has to restart all the way from the base, well, then we're going to have problems with the tree's hormones. And I'm going to have problems actually with lignification this time next year. So the trees aren't going to be lignified. They're not going to be able to survive the winter time like their genetics say. And so it's really important to protect every tree at least a little bit to encourage at least something there that will stay in hormonal balance. Some wood from last year that will stay in that hormonal balance to be able to lignify properly and, uh, survive the winter going forward so that's kind of it i mean you know i wanted you guys to not lose hope with this i know it's difficult and you got to just get over this little hurdle if you know you're new to this and you haven't really done a whole lot of protection of your fig trees and you haven't really spent enough time learning about this um, it, it's a little bit tough especially if you're in the middle of the country and you just got hit really hard by that and it's two years in a row i'm really sorry to you guys it just is what it is, but if you learn this and you take this little extra step of just simply protecting your fig tree that first year after you plant it or protecting your fig tree the first year after it got hit by a really nasty cold or if you pruned it really hard, that's the best thing you can do. And you know, this also, by the way, all these lessons in this video apply really well to those of us 
that are trying to keep the, the size of our fig tree in check. The more we prune it, the bigger it's gonna be next year. So think about it, do those thinning cuts rather than the heading cuts. And I'll see you guys for the next video. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.